And lastly, we'd like to have a few words said about someone that is not going to be here this evening for the first time in many, many years. Bruce Martell of Jim Winchester is going to say a few words. First off, I want to say, Bill, and Linda, you're here. That's great. And I couldn't ask for two nice people that live in any community. I have to think about somebody that's passed. And uh, for me, I've said so many things. I had to really roll back my memories. And uh, I take it back to 1979, the summer. The summer will be the anniversary of uh, the young lady that got in a very bad accident across the racetracks, and she was trapped in her car for a long, long time. And uh, a group of people here decided that it was time that we had the jaws of life. And we formed a group. I like to be a little jeopardy with you here, though, lighten things up. The Mystery Man. And uh, I would refrain from uh, some of the older people on the rescue squad not to mention it. But we had a, a the, the, the Jaws of Life is, is called the Lucas Tool. That's its real name. And uh, we checked it out and it cost $20,000, which was a lot, a lot of money. And we got involved with a lot of really nice people, the firemen, the rescue squad, the legion. Just, we shook every tree we could shake for money. And we wound up with about 18000 or so. And the guy walks in my store one day and he says, Jim, how much are you, how are you doing? And I told him the amount. He wrote the check. He got us going. And that's the mystery man. And they, he's dead and gone. And he wouldn't like me to tell the story to me. But the man was Cleveland Dodge. And Cleveland Dodge, you're in great company with Bruce Martel, Cleveland Dodge. I got to mention George and Helen Renner. I'm going to stop at Charlie Palmer because uh, there's too many people. There's a bunch in the back of me. There's a bunch of people I'd like to name here. They're just really good people who've done a lot for this community and they don't want any attention. Now, now Bruce, I miss it dearly. section of this meeting, I'd like to on behalf of all of us express to the town road uh, people the excellent job that they've done under very, very difficult circumstances. The roads are open, they've been safe, and not too slippery. Thank you very much for all those people. The inhabitants of the town of Conroe qualified to vote in the town meeting are hereby notified and warned to meet at the Powell Elementary School in said town on Monday, March 4, 2019 at 7.30 p.m. o'clock in the afternoon or on Tuesday, March 5, 2019 for Australian ballot voting at the Powell Center Firehouse to vote <coughs> the following issues <coughs> for the candidates. Moderator, one year. Selectman, three years. Selectman, one year. Selectman, one year. Selectman for remaining one year of a three-year term. Lister for three years. Lister for two years. Lister for one year. Auditor for three years. Auditor for two years. Auditor for one year. Constable for two years. Town agent for one year. Trustee of public monies for two years. Trustee of public bodies for two years. The four meeting on March 4th, 2019 will open at the Powell Elementary School at 7.30 for Articles 1 and 2 and stand adjourned until 7 a.m. at the Powell Center Firehouse for Australian uh, ballot voting on Articles 3 through 28. Polls will be open from 7 a.m until 7 p.m. at the Powell Center Firehouse. All right, we have to, we vote on the first two articles, and then what we will do is I'll read the article, and if anybody wishes to speak to that article, he or she should raise their hand and let us know if they'd like to speak. 
If you are not a member of Howell, not a resident of Howell, we ask that you identify yourself as not being. And what we would do, with the, the uh, group here would approve you speaking to that article. Only if the group approves it will you be able to speak. Okay. To hear reports of town officers and take action thereon. We need a motion to accept that. Cindy, have a second. Any dis Jim, thank you. Any discussion on that? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? Article 2, to see if the voters will authorize its trust to receive taxes until they become delinquent. Motion for that? Make a motion. Thank you. Second? Thank you. Get that. Any discussion on, on that article? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed or abstentions? The article passes. And the following articles will be voted tomorrow. The election of all officers required by law. Article 2, shall the voters appropriate $1,041,790 for the general expenses of the town, of which $560,243.93 is to be raised by taxes, and $189,796.07 from prior undesignated surplus funds. Article 5. So the voters appropriate $1,023,600 for the maintenance and construction of the highways in the town, of which $836,029.63 shall be raised by taxes, and $51,470.37 from prior year undesignated surplus funds. <laughs> Number six, shall the voters appropriate $11,000 towards the support of the Bennington Area Visiting Nurse Association and Hospital? Seven, shall the voters appropriate $500 for the support of the Bennington Community Conservation District? Eight, shall the voters appropriate $500 towards the support of the Bennington County Association Against Child Abuse? A nonprofit agency. Yes. I'm not president of Anybody have a problem with their speaking? If not, we ask you to come up and use the microphone. Thank you. I'm going to hold this so I can face you all. So my name is Jenna Caslin. I'm the case coordinator at the Bennington County Association Against Child Abuse. We're also known as the Bennington County Child Advocacy Center or the CAC. Uh, we're a staff of two. We're located at 129 Elm in Bennington. We also have two detectives that are co-located with us, the SIU, the Special Investigations Unit. My role there is to provide support and services for victims of sexual abuse of any age, child victims of egregious physical abuse and neglect, medical neglect, and online offenses. In addition to providing the supports and services, we also do education and prevention in the community. So I've been working here in Pownall with the youth. I start at Head Start tomorrow. I had a parent night here at Pownall last week. And I was supposed to start this morning, but we had the two hour delay. So I'll be starting tomorrow morning with the students here doing some abuse prevention. So I hope you'll vote yes again. Thank you so much for your support last year. Thank you. Shall the town of Pound vote to raise appropriate and expend the sum of $2,000 for the support of the Bennington Free Clinic? 10. Shall the voters appropriate $2,000 towards the support of the Bennington Project Independence? 11. Shall the town of Pound voters to appropriate the sum of $1,800 to support the program services? BROC Community Action in Southwestern Vermont for Low-Income Persons. 12. Shall the voters appropriate $600 for the support of services rendered to the town by the Green Mountain Retired Senior Volunteer Program and Volunteer Center. 
13, shall the voters appropriate $200 for the support of Vermont Greena? 14, shall the voters appropriate $5,000 towards the support of the Oak Hill Children's Center? Yeah. Yes. Good evening. I'm the director of the Oak Hill Children's Center. Could you give your name, please? Uh, yes, my name is Karen Billy. I'm sorry, and I'm a resident of Powell. Um, the Oak Hill Children's Center is a child care center and a preschool and pre-K program um, for children in Powell and Bennington, Vermont. Um, the money that you have given us over the years has helped us support scholarships for those children who reside in Powell. And this year, we were able to offer 28 scholarships. It also helps to support our capital um, funding. So I'd like to thank you all. And uh, again, on behalf of the Board of Directors of the Oak Hill Children's Center, I'd like to ask you to please vote um, this and again tomorrow. And um, thank you again. Thank you. 15, shall voters appropriate $60,000 towards the operation and maintenance of the Powell Fire Protection Association Incorporated? Yes. My name is Jamie Elmo. I'm the president of the Palmer Fire Protective Association. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for their support in the past years um, and hoping to get some continued support. Uh, as of right now, we have numerous firefighters in our Firefighter 1 and 2 program. Uh, going to school for that now. So I'd just like to say thanks for your support and ask for the continued support. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. 16, shall voters appropriate $50,000 for the Powell Rescue Scott towards ambulance replacement, insurance, operation, and maintenance? Yes. Yes. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Ellen Strohmeyer, and I just wanted to say thank you for your support in the past, and we are hoping that you will support us again. We are doing an open house in the spring, and we invite everyone to come. We will be advertising it, so you'll know when it is. We don't have a date set yet. Um, we have bought a new squad, and um, you're welcome to stop in any time during the day. There's usually somebody there if you'd like to see it before the open house. Thank you. Seventeen, shall the voters appropriate for the operation and maintenance of the Powell Valley Fire Department consisting of East Powell Fire Company, Powell Center Company, and the North Powell Fire Company for the sum of $52,000? Yes. Bob Nan, I'm the president of the Mount Valley Fire Department. I want to thank everybody for their support and hope we continue to get your support. And for everybody, men, women, who are just sitting home on a Monday night, <laughs> you're welcome to come to one of the fire stations and just ask questions. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Jimmy. Shall the voters appropriate $19,500 towards the Powell Valley Fire Department fire truck and equipment? <coughs> 19. Shall the town of Powell vote to raise appropriately and spend the sum of $2,000 for the support of the Powell Youth Baseball? Good evening. My name is Dan Sherman. I'm the president of the Powell Youth Baseball. Um, this money allows us to essentially keep baseball free. Um, we do ask kids to sell our apple tickets, but every kid in Palm can play baseball for free. Um, we also are trying to do some capital improvements to our little field down there on 346. Well, not capital improvements, but we've had we're getting by with, with pond, uh, pond sand and stuff for the infield, so we're hoping to be able to replace that with clay. We actually have enough money this year to, to uh, upgrade our, our little baseball field. So. Thank you for your support. I hope to continue it. Mention Field Day. What's that? Field Day. Field Day. Please Thank you. Can't you get it? 20. 
from Salvador's appropriated five hundred dollars for the support of services rendered to the town by Project Against Violent Encounters. Twenty-one. Salvador's appropriated fifteen thousand dollars for the operation and maintenance of the Solomon Wright Library. Yes. Yeah, my name is Julius Rosenwald, and I'm on the board of the Solomon Wright Public Library. And at last, I'd like to have uh, our board members stand. Uh, this year, there are two line items in support of the library. One is $15,000, which is basically for heat, electricity, utilities. Another is for a new chapter in the library, and that's $15,000 for a part-time director. We want to be Howell's Community Center, we want it to be Howell's Library, and we want it to be your library. And just for, to put it in, in uh, small change terms, the total budget for the library, which would be $30,000, amounts to two and a half cents, a little less than two and a half cents per person per day. So we really hope you come out and support this. And uh, there is a survey that we are providing to see what the community wants from their library. Hours, programming, everything. But it's a wonderful spot. It's got a lot of potential. And I want to take this opportunity to thank personally Linda Hall, who's dedicated thousands of hours to this library. And I think we should just keep it going for our community and in Toronto. Thank you very much. Oh, one thing. A heads up, this summer we're going to have a day uh, yet to be determined to honor Linda and Helen and George Renner. And I think that would be uh, a fun event. Thank you very much. Thank you. Article 22. Shall the voters appropriate $1,200 for the support of the services rendered to the town by the Southwestern Vermont Area Council on Aging. 23, shall the voters appropriate $5,000 towards the support of Sunrise Family Resources Center, a nonprofit agency? Yes. My name is Cindy Tumeyer. I'm Cindy Tumeyer, coming up to the microphone. I'm not a resident of Pine. Does anybody have a problem with this Go ahead. I'm the fiscal manager at Sunrise Family Resource Center. Um, for over 50 years, Sunrise has been in business of strengthening families throughout Bennington County. Uh, last year, we helped about 90 families from Helena. Uh, we are a member of the uh, child um, the network throughout the state. We provide um, early education for small children. We provide a alternative diploma program for families, um, intensive uh, in-home uh, case management, we have a housing program. Uh, it's, it's a it's a agency that really provides vital, necessary, wraparound support services for struggling families. Last year, your generosity um, was wonderful and I'm hoping that this year we will all vote again to continue to support us so we can support your your families in the community. Thank you. Thank you. Article 25. Shall the bill is appropriate two thousand five hundred dollars towards the support of the program and service provided to the town by the tutorial center. Excuse me? Article 24. Article 24. Article 25. Shall the bills appropriate $440 for the support of enabled Vermonters by the Vermont Center, disabled Vermont, by the Vermont Center for Independent Living? Article 27. Yes, I'm sorry. Hi, my name is Joe Bump, and I am a lifelong member of Palm. I live on Folks Drive down here. So, each year we go to our restaurant and we sort of check the block how many ballots are. So, I found a little ad and it's attractive. So, it might surprise you to know that there's 20 articles on here that ask for our money. 
the total for those 20 articles is $233,544. That's what we have to spend. Eight people come to speak from the 20 organizations. But every year we check the lock and give our money away. Money that's not budgeted but comes out of our taxes. So I think that we need accountability before we spend that kind of money. I think the chiefs ought to come up and give us some accountability of where they spend the money at the fire departments, at the rescue squad, because we know they got great equipment, and we know they're spending money. There's grants out there, there's things, and they should come and let us know how much they appreciate the dollars that we give and what they're using the dollars for. I don't think too many of you know how much it costs to send somebody to a fire school for 10 months and what we pay to put that to happen. Our rescue squad, that green squad, it's faithful, that's good. What do the other 16 organizations do for us? You know, obviously the library is the greatest place and you pay the great accounting of the money. And I feel great about checking the block and saying, yeah, here's my third you know, here's my money. Okay, because you're using it, obviously. You have a great report. I just think everybody should think about that when you go to the polls. Read that and think about what are we spending our money on? Excuse me, we, we have, the way that this is organized is that if an individual wants to speak on a particular article, he or she may do so, but it is not organized to be able to make a speech in terms of the overall budget. Am I out of work? Just, okay. If you just finish up with me. And that's all I wanted to say. I just think we should think about the agencies as a group, the 20 agencies, before we take that part. Thank you. Thank you. Article 26. Shall the lowers approve acquisition of a 8.5 acres of land located at 197 Maple Grove Road, parcel 007-32, span 495-2, dash 10486 for the purpose of the town gravel bed at a cost of $200,000. Said capital acquisition to be financed for a term of five years or less by the intermunicipal uh, loan using the existing allocated road funds. Would you like to speak to that? Yes, I think that would be good. Thank you. <laughs> Joel Burrington, I'm your own foreman. Uh, as you know, we need gravel. We have 40 miles plus dirt roads. Um, right now, we're just about out. Uh, boy, I don't know if I can get enough this year to uh, make up another 4,000 yards. This article, if we do this, we figured so it wouldn't raise taxes, we're keeping it within our budget our gravel budget for $105,000. Um, this hasn't, this land has been rumors around, it's been up for sale way cheaper. This land has never been up for sale in Idaho. So, we worked the deal out, negotiated. Uh, if anybody knows me, that wasn't my first price, $200,000. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, but, Try to save the town money. You know, our own sand costs us forty thousand dollars this year. If we had our own, we could screen it for two, three hours a year. But they think it's a good buy. How does that end of the loan work? I don't quite understand the wording. Well, we're going to take out a five-year loan. Um, it, we have the money in the budget already, so we're going to use existing funds rather than, you know, go back and ask the taxpayers for extra money. Um, I, Ellen's the one to talk to her alone, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> She'll be over the bank. Okay. Any questions that anybody has? There's a couple of questions. Yes, Jim, and then we'll, we'll get around to Okay, no, I just want to say, this is one of the, uh, the pets of Mr. Montel when he was this way. 
We maintained this land, we took care of it. It's a gravel bed, but it's a diamond in the rock. It's good body. And uh, he's been on that land for quite a bit. And so we able to get our hands on it, let's do it. Yes. 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 Um, would you identify yourself? Uh, my name is Jenny Dewar. Would you um, mind coming up to the microphone just so everybody can hear you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Joel. Yes. Can you clarify and uh, confirm that in the five years of paying this off, it would be actually less expensive than buying gravel from elsewhere? Yes, definitely. Thank you. Yes, definitely. Very good. Thanks for yeah. the Any other questions on that? Yes. Well, I was asked today if you all were going to shut up. I was under the impression we're going to. I want to speak up. I'll bring the document. Come here. Come here. No, I was asked. I was asked today by a, a citizen, and I really didn't have all the answers, but we are going to do tests holes to make sure of this material yes. to some extent, correct? Yes, we are. Um, actually, one of the we're going to start, we was going to do them before, let's see if the people go down. It's, it's going to cost us five, six thousand. And we're going to do some test borings to see what's in there to make sure it's not just a bunch of junk for buying. Well, that was the question the guy wanted to know because if we're going to you don't know what the land is, so, let's unless you dig into it or boring yeah. or something. All right, I just wanted that on the record. I'm actually pretty confident uh, the town had a good pit all them years. Uh, Bill Byron had a good pit. You know, it's all in that same vein that runs down through there. I think it'll pretty much be the same material. Very good, thank you. Thank you, Joel. Are there any other questions on this? Sounds like a, a good deal. Okay, Article 27, shall the voters of Palm of Vermont appropriate $15,000 to hire a part-time director of the Solomon Wright Public Library? That's pretty good one, huh? Nate, go ahead. I still think it's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Julius. <laughs> I don't think I'll let him get away without saying something. So many people use it, and those people that do not have good reception for their Wi-Fi and have very, very poor. They make a weekly trip down to the library to load up their computers. Very necessary these days. 28, shall the voters authorize the select board to acquire, maintain, and operate two new school buses donated by the Connell School District at an estimated cost of $13,450 in the road fund. Would you like to speak to that? Yes. Rosemary Pelletier, um, I was at the select board meeting earlier this week, and Michael, you mentioned some concerns in terms of insurance, et cetera. Uh, so I think it might be appropriate to voice those here uh, in terms of the article. My question is, whether it makes financial sense for us to take on the buses and what educational opportunities it provides that we wouldn't have without them, even if those were not considerations, <coughs> does it make sense to take ownership of the buses and then just turn around and sell them so that the town gets some money? Because it seems to me that if we don't take possession of them and the court ruling does not go in the, the favor of the, the power school, then we simply lose all of the buses and have nothing to show for that investment. Okay. So I guess that's my question. Now that, that assumes we could sell them, but there's a lot of schools out there. I would think if we owned buses, we could turn around and sell them, even if it wasn't to our advantage to continue to own them. Anybody can feel comfortable with addressing that? Can I make a comment? Sure. Excuse me. <laughs> I think it's important to keep in mind that we have um, funded these buses from taxpayer dollars. If you remember, there was always a sinking fund for buses. 
I mean, if you look at the, the school board, um, the school board's budget and the town budget, and you put them on, you kind of think of it as a pool for the taxpayer support, we are still, you know, a field trip for students at the Powell Elementary School for the do four buses to pull out of the yard, if they start charging $100. So I don't care if you're going from here to Bennington, they're charging you $100 to pull out of the school yard. Um, the other problem is, is the Pennell Elementary School has a rec program in the summertime that many of us, including myself, have used for our children. Um, that, was, that transportation was free as well. And also, there's a ski program at the school that the buses transport the kids to the ski slopes. Um, that is very reasonable, and my children participated in it, as I'm sure many of your children have. So I just want to keep, we have to keep this in mind. I believe if the buses are not voted on, then they go back to the state. Is that how that works, Mike? No? So I, I just want to remind you of those things. Thank you. Thank you. Cindy Brownell, what I did was, the school board did, we approached the selectmen and asked them to take ownership of two of our buses so that we may continue doing field trips for our children. Uh, we tried to get to four, they're too expensive, the timing is never correct, and I have a list, and we go on like 20 field trips a year. Um, it's so educational for these children and what happens is the school has joined the litigation. Now it doesn't look like we, we are going to win our case. So come July 1, the new board takes over. It's made up of two board members from every district. It will be their decision if these buses are not taken over, whatever property we own is common becomes theirs. I'm trying to save two. Um, we can even leave them at the school. We don't have to move them anywhere. We have drivers that will drive. Um, I just think it's a, for the benefit of the children, and I've been on the board 19 years, and it's, it's pretty sad to have to go into the school and say, I'm sorry kids, you're not going on a field trip anymore. Because we can't afford it. So I appreciate your support. Mr. you say the state takes over all about properties, which it doesn't include this bill. Oh, did everybody hear that? Tim, why don't you call her? She's a smart girl. Jim's question was, Good. 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 his question was, does the state take over this building? This building right now is in the name of the school. When the new school board, the new select board get on board, and we, I have until July 1, that was my next step, is to come to the, the select board, ask them to put this school in their name, the town of Pound. Then that saves it. Number one, the town and the school bought the generator. This is a fallout shelter for our town. Mm -hmm. I would like to save the school also. We, we worked with the select board and they took over the ball field down in North Powell so the children could have that for all the uh, ball games that they play with, that they play down there. It was used all the time. That's saved. Anything the school owns will then be turned over to this new state at 46. <laughs> And if you haven't figured it out by now, I don't agree with it. So does that include the senior center over here? Yes, it does. But again, it's going to be the decision of that board. Here we are, here we are, looking for the town office. We just had a beautiful meeting here with the candidates in the library. What a nice place. We bought this place a long time ago. My kids were the first years to come in here. This is a really, really fine facility. Yes, it is. And, and for someone to take it over, this, the only thing with this Act 46 is it's a marriage that you can't undo. There's no divorce here. <laughs> and, 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 say, and to lose this property, you see, when we're, when we're trying to build a new town office, there's a place you could do anything. Are we out of our minds? 
You can't let this go. There has to be a way we can keep this building. That's why I signed up to run another three years so that I can be at this meeting and be a big mouth for this and see how they're going to handle our children. Otherwise, trust me, it's been a, a decision. It, should I give up? Should I not? Well, I'm not. And I do have a big mouth. So I, I do want to represent these children in this building. Before I ask for a vote to adjourn this meeting, there are a few other people that would like to speak to the Sunday group here. One is the uh, landfill transfer station. Transfer station. Transfer station. Very good. Do you want to come up and say what you want to say? Yeah. I'm Tom Shuey. I'm the uh, supervisor <coughs> at our transfer station. I have a few handouts over here, in particular three of them right here in front of the table. Uh, one is a Solid Waste Alliance survey, which we're required to hand out. Hopefully we can get enough people to uh, fill it out. This is part of the Act 148 that drives everything that we do. And it's through the uh, Solid Waste Alliance. And then we have, uh, I have folders, I have flyers over there for the Household Hazardous Waste Collection Day of spring, which is uh, Saturday, May 18th from 8 to 1 up at the Bennington Transfer Station. And then I have another one here. This is a newsletter from the uh, Bennington Solid Waste Alliance. And on that, there is a, a link to the survey. If you don't want to take one here, please take one of these. You can go on, it's, it's just, it only takes two minutes to do it, but it really helps us and it really helps us get a, a better feedback of what we're doing. We have to do it every three years. So we have that. And then we have Green Up Day coming, and that's May 4th, first Saturday in May. It's always a bad day. Uh, what I want to do is, I want to, now I have to thank Bruce Martel again. I know he's not with us, but. He helped significantly last year with the Legion. We were able to place a 30-yard dumpster down there. We were able to use the pavilion. The kids were down there. We had probably 30 to 40 children and adults, and we had hot dogs and burgers and, and all kinds of snacks and things for everybody. And it was by far, I do mean by far, the largest uh, green up day we've ever had. And, uh, this year, I also have the uh, Legion has graciously donated that to us again from the day, uh, and I must, I must thank them again. You know, they, without them, it wouldn't have been nearly as successful as, as what we had. Now, we also have a group here in town that works year-round on cleaning up the roads and so forth, and it's called Panel Proud, and I'm going to have Dave Lowe come up and speak a little bit about that. But please remember, bring your beer at the table on your way out. Pick up some of these, these items, if you would, please. And that way you have an idea of what, what we're doing and, and when it's coming up. Because May 4th is not that far away now. It really is. You think about it. I know, I know, I know if it's snow there for shell this morning, it doesn't seem that close. But hopefully it is. David? Dave Lowe, town president. As Tom indicates, the Pound of Proud seeks to encourage year-round and town-wide citizen involvement in the task of reducing litter from our roads and streams. We meet uh, approximately monthly in the library. Thank you very much, library. And we're always looking for more people to attend. Um, we're also hoping to find more and more people who will be interested in taking on the task of adopting uh, roads themselves here and looking out for specific roads during the course of the year. Anyone who's interested in getting on our email distribution list can stop by and see and leave and take a look at our uh, our Common Crowd poster and uh, feel free to, to join us. Um, one small anecdote serves to 
uh, provide an example of how Pownal roots can evolve into Pownal values. Parker Creevy grew up in Pownal and fondly remembers hiking and swimming in the tubs as a kid. He admits that as a teenager, he was guilty of tossing his fair share of beer bottles and cigarette butts along the pathways there. But now, as an adult living in the area, Parker is committed to making up for his teenage short-sightedness. He now regularly can be seen walking the paths of the tubs with a uh, garbage trash bag in hand. And he has even gone so far as to create this bumper sticker the tubs, which gives the compass coordinates, the location, rubber ducky. Now that's pound of pride, and we are grateful to Parker. So please uh, join us however you can, uh, and you can do it in small ways in your own neighborhoods around town. You can do it in larger ways, and we hope to see many of you out on our beautiful roads on May 4th. Last, but certainly not least, I, Nelson, I know, would like to talk. <laughs> I'm going to have Brian join me. I, I believe I need permission. Yes, you do. <laughs> Why don't you, you want, how do you want to do this, Nelson? I can face him here just while I can face him here. Yeah. I'm going to have uh, Brian uh, do something first, if you don't Does mind. Does anybody have a problem with Brian Gammy? Speaking to us, you know, for you? Who, who is it? <laughs> <laughs> He's one of our senators for the Bennington town. Right, and I guess I, I'd like to have uh, Linda Hall come up also. Probably the last thing she wants to do. But. <laughs> so I have a uh, Senate concurrent resolution here honoring you. You're going to get the official document the mail, but I have the words here. So uh, this is on behalf of Senator Sears, myself, Senator Campion, <laughs> Representative Brownell, Representative Carroll, and Representative Morrissey, and uh, I guess we would call him Representative Bot. So but what is it when you retire, but you're still? <laughs> yes, thank you. Emeritus. So if you'll bear with me for just a moment. State concurrent resolution honoring Linda Hall for her 30 years of outstanding volunteer leadership as the director of the Solomon Wright Public Library in Powell. Whereas the key precept of the mission of the Solomon Wright Public Library in Powell is to promote the joys and benefits of lifelong learning, and whereas the library's exemplary director for three decades, Linda Hall implemented this mission superbly. And whereas her accomplishments leading the library and its all-volunteer staff were numerous and of enduring benefit to its patrons, and whereas on the digital front, Linda Hall spearheaded the establishment of an online catalog of 15,000 entries as the library's contributions to the town's 250th birthday celebration, and more recently, she oversaw the introduction of the fiber optic Wi-Fi system facilitating mobile device internet access, and whereas during her tenure, two building upgrades resulted in the library becoming compliant with the Americans with Disabilities Act and adding a community room, a new reading room, and an office, and whereas among her successful efforts were increased operational hours and improved children's services, such as the Summer Reading Project, and whereas Linda Hall maximized usage of the resources of the interlibrary loan system and served as an excellent genealogical research resource. And whereas she coordinated book group meetings, craft nights, and an annual book sale that served as a major fundraiser. And whereas Linda Hall's administrative skills were evident in her budgetary planning, town report contribution, and the library's annual achievement of the Department of Libraries standards for public libraries. And whereas after three decades of excellent leadership at the Solomon Wright Public Library, she has concluded her directorship. And whereas Linda Hall will be greatly missed among the library's patrons and volunteers, but left, 
left a vastly enhanced institution that is the pride of Pownall. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives in the state of Vermont that the General Assembly honors Linda Hall for 30 years of outstanding volunteer leadership as the director of the Solomon Wright Public Library in Pownall. And be it further resolved that the Secretary of State be directed to send a copy of this resolution to Linda Hall and to the Solomon Wright Public Library. Congratulations and thank you. I hope our townspeople will continue to support those functions and the Solomon Wright Library's mission stated on our website. Not only does the support assist the residents of Pownall in the present and the future, but honors those volunteers who worked hard to ensure the town would have a lasting opportunity that is fostered by the building of a local library in 1965, opening in 1966. Thank you for your votes of support in the springs past, and may you continue to say yes in the springs of the future. Chairman gave me the great pleasure of choosing me to report out bill. But and then we'll do that, and then from that point, we'll pass it, and then it moves on to the Senate. And they have the great fun of uh, either modifying, changing, or voting it out the way we do it. And then the governor gets his chance to put his pen to it. Uh, so that's sort of the process I'm learning. But I'm also trying to learn 150 people's names. <laughs> that's the members in the House. And, and that, again, is, uh, I might be up to about 25, I think, mean, uh, and that's because 11 of them are my committee where I serve. So that's where it is. But uh, in government ops, what we've been doing is some things, uh, meeting with the Secretary of State, uh, meeting with the HR head of that, uh, a lot of the people that uh, basically run the various departments but it was the Secretary of Education and whoever that was explaining why 
They either have a lack of staff and they need more, or uh, they, they all need more money. That's one thing I've learned. <laughs> so they say anyways. But basically what we got is it's a, a changing educational, from the Secretary of Education, there's a changing education going on. It's not just Act 46. It's a lot to do with a lot of things that have changed to do with how we teach our uh, children in need, how we teach uh, people as we reach out. It's, it's much more harder than I uh, thought when you listen to him speak because of the staffing change that's going on within the department. And if anybody's gone through change, it's the change of those people that are working for him as well as him being the new guy on the block that's having some ups and downs. And that was the educational department thing. And OPR, which is the Office for uh, Professional Regulation, they do a lot of licensing. And one of the things we're looking at now is uh, in there is a group that each year they take a group of licenses of different organizations. And this year we're looking at uh, some nursing, we're looking at uh, commerces, we're looking at uh, real estate people and others that work. And then there's probably about eight of them total. And basically we have to decide whether we should be expanding their ability to do things or not. And it, of course they all come in wanting to do more things, but our goal is to see whether they should uh, have more courses, have an MD after their name, and different things to, to do some things. And that's the OPR. But during this, one of the things that happened was a result-based accountability was put in place a few years ago. And what we're looking at is, is uh, each time they report to us now, they have to show us different sections of what they're doing and how the results have been on that, whether they're increasing or whether they're decreasing and what it is, and explain to us why and what they would need to make things better in government and more cost effective. So that's, that's uh, my learning curve there. Uh, there's more I could talk about, but I begin to ramble. I'd rather, if somebody had questions to ask, I'd rather try to answer them. That's where I usually did my best uh, serving you with the other things. Is there anything uh, that you heard from the legislature you're interested in me trying to give an answer to? Oh, you guys are a good crowd. Wolford <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll had at least a half a dozen. <laughs> OK, thank you very much. And I hope to uh, continue to support you the way you'd like to see me. Just reminded, I did put down uh, up here where you can sign down your name and give me your uh, email and stuff. That way, there, when I get to put something on, I can make sure I get it out to you. Thank you. Are there any other issues or uh, subjects that should be brought before this group? Yes. I'm Joanne Prouty. And uh, Michael over here, and I don't remember your last name, Walter. has been with us about a year now. And I was wondering if he had some information or just wanted to tell us things that he's found sure. in our town and what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put you on the spot there. Yeah. Um, Maybe next time. Maybe next time. <laughs> But there are a lot of issues, and I know that he's anxious to work with the new board as it becomes uh, the legitimate board of the panel. And uh, I know that he's got a lot of things on his agenda. So if there are no other issues, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. And a second, Jim. All in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Thank you very much.